welcome, or should I say welcome back, everybody, to RimWorld, the epilogue for our Save Our Ship series. If, if for whatever reason there are people watching right now who haven't watched the other series, I'd definitely recommend going and checking that one out first. Otherwise, you'll have no idea who the characters are, what the scenario is, what's going on. Uh, for those of you who have seen that one, or, or, you know, if you are just picking this one up, I have created a mod pack for specifically this version of the series. So, with uh, kind of the retrospect of last series, with hindsight, I've, I've taken out a lot of mods that basically went unused. I've taken out a lot of mods that are not really relevant, a lot of mods that have known conflicts, like for example Antimatter Annihilation, and really streamline things quite heavily. So for those of you who perhaps want an updated pack or a slightly different pack, this one might be more appropriate. So I'll put links to that in the in the comment section as as usual in the description of the video. So what have we got this time then? We have our perhaps survivors of the previous catastrophe, perhaps they were whisked away in escape pods, Perhaps it was all another simulation, just like last series and the series before it. We have Mondo, Hocus, X, Dr. Don, MD, and Ciala. I have imported over from last series some, uh, some, some of our previous characters, essentially. Um, again, all of which just happened to be in this strange research lab out in the Arctic, for reasons I'll talk about in a second. Um, our, our four survivors, hand-chosen for a very specific reason. We've got Mondo and Hocus, of course, our main characters, ones with the most experience. Dr. Don MD is a doctor, um, also another good builder. And then we have Ciala, who is incredible at crafting. So all of them have their various roles. Hocus, of course, being our head researcher. What have I started for this playthrough? Now, most of this isn't really scenario friendly. I can't just upload a scenario of, of course, this playthrough. I've, I've, I've pre, or, or we've appeared in this base. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, ready set up for us. There are some very basic resources, but more importantly, the big difference between this series and last series is that we are using the Rim Factory mod. This will allow us to very, very quickly get back into space. No more kind of spending 20 episodes messing around on a planet, nothing, nothing like that. We've got a big open ice cap where we can build on quite literally every single square of the map besides what we've already built on. And we've got means of producing our own resources. So we have a cool digital storage unit with enough meals to last our people when they come out of storage there until we get some, you know, hydroponics, things like that enabled. And then we have a boatload of resources, weapons, and more importantly, machinery to help us get off the ground here. Um, quite literally, in this case, quite literally get off the ground and back into space as soon as possible. The reason I decided to start on an ice cap, unlike, you know, starting in space where we could potentially be attacked, starting on the moon where there's, you know, room but not massive moon, or, or like we started last time, which was just on a room full of mountains where we couldn't build anything. This one is pretty fantastic for building a ship. And of course, I now know, I, I think I know how to build ships, where things should go, um, you know, heat sink distribution, placement of buildings, things like that. So we can really get a fresh start here. More importantly, this series is going to have access to, you know, the Rim Factory stuff, which is... Basically, infinite resources, uh, sort of uh, quicker resources, auto crafting, things like that, means we can focus on the crazy ships, and that's really what this is all about. Uh, like, like I said, an epilogue series, or we can explore the real heights of Save Our Ship. Now, in addition to that, I do have one mod that we did not have in last series. So, we're starting with all the research, because, of course, Hocus researched all the research in last series. She hasn't just forgotten that. If it was a simulation, those skills will, will have stayed within her mind. Um,. The one caveat to that is we are playing this time with the Save Our Ship Extensions mod, which adds a bunch of post Arcotech research. So uh, some of this stuff is like crazy high levels of, of research, as you can see there. Uh, ending and, and kind of cultivating here, and eventually the, the Antimatter, uh, Arcomatter, sorry, Ascension, which looks to be... I can't count all those zeros. I got a bit of a headache, but it's many zeros. Um... So that's going to take a while to get there. That'll be our research goal for this series, is basically just getting through this stuff. And to be honest, even just a couple of these research tiers account for way more than everything else on the list together. Oh, that being said, hopefully that's a, that's a half-decent introduction to what's actually going on here. Let's wake up your man himself, Mondo. Back from the other series. Uh, we aren't playing with Rimhub this time because because uh, we do need to be able to see the ship come at one. Now, somebody said we can do some toggles. That's all right. We'll just get used to the base game reward uh, UI for a little while. Mondo, still the same old Mondo, uh, and then of course Hocus, Dr. Don, and Ciala, all the same characters. With they, they are identical to how they were at the end of last series, so in this case he has malnutrition. Uh, because you might remember at the end of last series, we ran out of food. He has the love enhancers, the cybernetic arms, the hydromechanical stomachs. You're probably thinking, Mr. Streamer, didn't Mondo get hit by a death laser directly in the face at the end of last series? Well, maybe it was a simulation all along, is all I can say to that. Let's get, first and foremost, the reactor online. I think it's probably not a terrible idea. Let's get these robots online. And oh, I need to change the audio settings as well. Don't let me forget to do that. Let's just get everything online first and worry about that later. There we go. Right, so we are in overdrive one. 
We've got enough for 10 days worth of fuel. So some of the first things we should probably work on is, is obviously setting up the machines to mine uranium and then setting up an auto crafter to maybe automatically produce fuel pods. I don't think that'd be a terrible idea. There we go. Much better. Right. Okay. So let's get Mono to very quickly wake up Hocus and... Oh, to be fair, they're auto eject casket. So I can just hit the, funnily enough, eject sleeper button. Um... There we go. Siala, Dr. Don, and Hocus, welcome back. So in our digital storage unit, in total, we have just a shitload of steel. Um, but it is worth pointing out that we do have... Of course, we have the entanglement manifold there as well. Um, we have some beds in here, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere. There we are, for when people come out of storage. We've got some bedrooms basically set up and ready to go at that point. So we could go as far to... What do you think about taking apart these crypto sleep caskets and turning them into bedrooms straight away? And that's probably not a terrible idea. I've gone ahead and set up their work list here. So, again, very basic to start off with. Of course, harvesting and growing is irrelevant. So, we get hydroponics. We might as well put it on there to, to start off with. Um, so, we've got construction, repairing, and then delivering. In the case of Siala, probably wouldn't be a terrible idea. Do they keep their tools? No. So, we've only got the weapons in the storage, the gorse rifles. Um, everything else, we're just going to just gonna have to wait for, really. So, how much is this outputting? 10,000 watts excess. Wow, okay, fair enough. So we haven't got that much power to play around with. So we do have the Vanometric power cells. Each one of those, I think, is about 4,000 because uh, they're large Vanometric power cells. We'll go ahead and get those installed, I guess, into here just straight away. This will be kind of our lab, our manufacturing. This will be everything. And then we'll plan the ship out just over the rest of the map. If we want to build something ridiculous, like, like one of the big guns to start off with, like a massive gunship, I think we should probably start with, funnily enough, the gun, and then we'll work backwards, making sure we've got the right amount of heat sinks and things like that. I also have some other mods, actually, that uh, I didn't know would be so relevant. Also, obviously, I didn't know the mechanics, but uh, didn't even know existed until we played last series, and one of those allows us to more easily see the heat distribution for our weapons, so that will be able to hopefully expedite the, uh, the the ship planning process a little bit more. We won't be spending too long on the ground here. But before I start planning out furniture and anything else, which should be our top priority here, let's make sure... Uh, let's make sure we've got some drills activated and drilling. The last thing we want is to run out of fuel in our in our power plant here. That would suck. Um, so let's get down. Um, and we can put the drills ready anywhere. It doesn't really make that much of a difference, but I will quickly take a look. Actually, you know what we could do just to really expedite the process? Let's go ahead and make a stockpile, and let's go critical, and let's just set all buildings to be dumped in there for the time being. We'll occasionally, we'll, we'll eventually be able to do the, uh, obviously the outputs, the IO outputs uh, connected directly to these. That'll save us a lot of time. We'll put those in here. To be fair, we could reinstall the whole unit into the, uh, into there instead. Use this as, as just exclusively a kind of recreation um, civilian building. You know, just for, just for living their lives in their time off. Um, let's go ahead and install those beds. Apparently they come straight off crypto sleep and fallen asleep, which I didn't know was a thing. There you go. Ah, uh, nothing like the nice relaxing hum of a uh, ship fishing reactor. Is it green? Why is it green? That's different. Were they, was it always green? Weird. That might be because we've got the ship options enabled. Uh, sorry, the, the ship extensions enabled. I've never seen that before. Weird. Uh, maybe it's temperature. Maybe it's related to temperature. Because quite clearly it's 22 in there. Oh, weird. I don't know, actually. Okay, strange. God knows. Hopefully it's nothing to worry about. We'll know when the base explodes in the first bloody episode again. Not that that's ever happened. <laughs> okay, let's get these power cells installed as soon as possible then. Um, we'll just kind of pepper the sides of the walls with them here. Um, we've got quite a lot, but, you know, we don't, we don't want to be suffering with power issues setting us back from getting back into space again, huh? Uh, whoever, whoever built this base quite clearly were, were eager to get back into space. Let's put it that way. Let's also put another hauling bot. I guess we can move all the hauling bots in here, to be honest. Again, save on space in the other building. But the cool storage unit, I'm happy to keep in there because it's cool. Um, and it's got all their meals. And last time I checked, people actually need those. Just contrary to the last series, they do like eating food. So we go ahead and move that one over. Obviously, the hauling bots will have to take a little while to get all that shit hoisted over. That's not a big deal. Right, plasma drills then. Let's get those installed in the center. How many of those do we have? We've got four. Let's go one, two, three, and... Uh, excuse me, that one, four, there we go. And then for the assembler, we've only got one assembler for the time being. Um, so what is that radius? So the radius is, uh, the, the blue radius is, is area it can grab from for ingredients, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so let's go ahead and put that there. Um, and then we'll move you up to here. So, so that's quite useful for, um, oh, we got another digital storage unit. Oh, cool. Um, so that's quite useful for... Actually, don't install it for the time being. For, for using those I.O. ports, we can surround the whole thing, um, all, all that blue area with I.O. ports. And I believe the white is the output from what I remember. I've only used this once before, and that was in the Robo Daddy series. Um, yeah, there we go. So that was output. Fine. Um, so we'll have that outputting straight into a port if possible, and then we'll build a load more around it. Cool. Right. Got to remember how all this works now. 
That's it, power. Okay, so we can increase the power to the to the drills, can't we? Um, there is an invisible power conduit going over there, uh, just because it completely ruined the aesthetics of this poor room. Right, let's go ahead and put the output direction to the center, and we can put some IO ports on there. So we need uranium, basically, straight away. That's, that's the one thing we've got to just make sure is down before we worry about hydroponics or recreation or anything like that. Let's go to the production tab. Oh, what is in here? Hello. Oh! Oh, look at this. Wow. Um, Arco matter. The capital heat core. Slowly bleeds into the surrounding room, so an, a massively upgraded heat sink, I would assume. There's a lot to see here. I'm glad I checked this first before we got into the shipbuilding, otherwise I'd have probably ended up building it out of the regular crappy components. We've got, like, steel shielded ship hull there. Wow, cool. Okay, so we'll try and build a ship out of that. Why not go big, huh? Might as, well, might as well go as big as possible to start off with rather than slowly upgrading in the future. Right, so storage. Is that where our IO ports are now? Oh, God, there's so much. Um, let's try industrial. Uh, somewhere in here, I'm sure, is... There we go, IO ports. Right, so let's get some of those down. I know we haven't got the... Well, we do have components. They're just not in storage quite yet. Um, and then we'll have those feeding straight back into the digital storage unit. Then all we need to do is add a bill to this one. So the only thing we need to keep the reactor online is a machining table. We'll put down a couple of cabinets there, too. And then we'll get the... Uh, do you want to put down maybe just a scientist cabinet? I suppose you could put down one of each. Doesn't really matter too much, does it? There we go. Nice. Okay, so how do those... How do those work again? So we say... Um, they are an input into digital storage unit. There we are. So I think now when these machines eventually when we set them up with a with a job When they were up and, and drop items into the output They should immediately go into the storage unit for what I remember That's gonna keep things nice and smooth for us here And we can put the output of course by the where we decide to build the ship um, Put some outputs over there to make it convenient So they're not constantly running back and forth and back and forth just to get components and things like that I checked another plasma drill. I didn't even realize that. Okay, so you then let's get you churning out uranium um, Let's not get too high colony wealth. We are playing on uh, A difficulty which I've already forgotten peaceful apparently uh, that's reset because I definitely wasn't playing on Cassandra either I did say that we would play on Phoebe blood and dust um, So that way I think that's probably a not a bad start, right? Gives us plenty of time between between raids and attacks and things. We've got to be still careful about colony wealth. Uh, but when we get into space, that'll of course affect the difficulty up there too. Right, let's go for... How, how much grid excess power do we have? Not a massive amount. We could probably boost each one by... Let's boost each one to 5,000. That's probably not a terrible idea. There we go. So from you, we want steel. Uh, I think we'll do until we've got... 3,000. That's probably not a terrible idea. You, I want gold. Let's do until we've got... Uh, Let's say 500 gold, otherwise our colony wealth is going to be through the roof. You minus that all-important uranium. You can do that until we've got... I think 1,000 is probably okay with uranium. And then you get us plasteel until we've got 1,000 as well. There we go. Oh, no, plasteel. Let's go 2,000 on plasteel. Um, yeah, 2,000 plasteel, 3,000 steel, 1,000 uranium. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. We can mine components. Steel, gold, uranium, plasteel, components. That seems a bit weird. Um, Combine jade. Build, build the build the the kind of recreation things out of jade again. Uh, combine silver. Make sure we've always got enough for trade. I think that's probably a better idea. Um, so let's do that until we've got like 10,000 silver always in storage. Maybe 15,000. 15,000 colony wealth is not massive and it gives us plenty of tools to play around with. So I'm more than happy to go for that just for the just for the kind of opportunity cost. There we are. And those are immediately being output into the digital storage. So you know what? I should probably open this up so we can keep a, uh, a track of things. There we are. Um... So we can just leave those to open for the timing. You can see that's going to slowly tick up over time. When we get this thing active, that's going to go in no time at all. Right, so let's get... Uh, so in terms of resources, we're good. This one, we need to say uranium fuel pods. Now what I'm going to do is we're not actually going to make that at the machining table. So the machining table is basically just going to be there. Obviously, our people will work at that eventually. Uh, but for the timing, I'm going to use that just to grab some recipes from it. Oh, you don't even need to queue it up from what I recall. I don't really remember. Um, this is what you need to install next to the assembler so that it can grab recipes from. We need a machine frame, um, steel components, and a recipe data disk. Good God, how do I build all of this stuff? I don't remember. Um, machine frame, recipe. Let's, let's try data. There it is. Data disk is 50 steel. Okay, so we're doing until we've got... You know what we're doing until one? We'll have the assembler automatically make data disks in the future. Um, and then the other one, we wanted a machine frame, didn't we? So that might be at the fabrication bench, but really, I have no idea. Um, stick one of those down then quickly. Uh, oh, I think, you know what? We've got one in storage, if I'm not mistaken. Or right here. I'll do. Um, we could put that there. There's no reason not to. It should connect up to everything fine still. Is it here? Uh, no, apparently not. Balls. Where do I, where do I build machine frames then, brother? Um, 
Shearer, don't really need that. Milker, animal harvester, spacer animal harvester, animal manager, right. Recipe database assembler, and then we've got the adaptive assembler. That's what we need the, the recipes for. Um, cookers, fermenting tanks, food processors, drunk cultivators, blast furnace. I remember. It's all coming back to me now. Um, so your blast furnace is your first building. That's the, that's what you generally start there. If you're obviously starting with no research, that's what you'll just have to start with. And I think this puts out... There we are. Simple machine frames to build simple machines. With the simple machines, you build the more advanced machine frames. Am I remembering right? I hope so. Um, and then with that, we build the industrial furnace, I believe. Yeah, there you are. Okay, I think that's right. I don't really remember. Oh, God, it's fueled with wood. <laughs> <laughs> Already we are we are completely stuck. Brilliant. You didn't really think that one through, did you, you fool? Okay, um slight problem there. Uh we'll cross that headline in a second. Let's get this other adapted assembler just set up to start off with. Fuck. Okay, um, we've got a spare digital storage unit. I I don't really care about that. We'll put that back in storage. We've got a 64k battery too, just as kind of a a spare battery if we need it. Obviously the ship capacitors are insane. Um but we could use that as a, I guess an off-grid backup power. Doesn't really matter too much. Just go ahead and put that there. There we are. Um, okay, so we're already we're already monumentally screwed unless I grow some trees, which uh, it's an ice sheet. Uh, trees aren't really known for growing there very well. Finish the kitchen fast though, so they got that going for them, which is nice. Um, let's put down uh, chairs. We haven't, we haven't got any chairs at all. Oh, we do have chairs. There we are. Uh, advanced chairs a little bit expensive for this stage of the game. Probably. That's all right. Or oh, we can put the horseshoes pin right in the middle of the base. Fantastic. That be that's just incredible. Just trying to cook a nice lavish meal made of human meat and tomatoes and ketchup and more tomatoes and some idiots climbing all over your stove i wonder if the pathfinding thing is still still an issue this time around um from my testing it was a save our ship um issue like inherently uh but we'll see if it, it probably won't be compounded by all those other mods that we had enabled last time which is probably gonna save us a lot of time and effort let's put some let's give them all a computer you know what i'm feeling generous here 10 components apiece, my god. It's a good job we can mine literally infinite of those. I can't believe we're already stuck building bloody hydroponics. Uh, on the plus side, we know the power of the, sp the, the sprinkler now. That was the true driving force between our spaceship. I'm not saying that correlation equals causation, but I will say that the second I started taking away the massive as, as, of, of sprinklers, that's when our ship blew up. So that's something worth bearing in mind. Uh, let's put down a few of these then. Um, I need enough room for a good amount of sprinklers. So why don't we do something like this? For, can we even grow trees? I see if we can actually grow trees in the artificial ecosystem before I commit to that too much. We've got the components for it. Yeah, nice. Okay, what can we grow in here then? Trees? Oh, hello. Raw or Uranus or, or meat. I don't know what you are. Um, active Inferno Crystal. Inactive Zero Crystal. What the hell is this? Meat grown with the help of an, an algae. Algae writhe around to reform. Oh, that's vile. Thank you. Absolutely disgusting. It's 200 days to grow. Um, we do have the vegetable garden mod. Because I wanted a beetroot, quite honestly. Because, uh, oh, sorry, lentils. Um, so that we can have space meat. Turns out there's already space meat in the mod pack. Um, I need trees, though. Cocoa trees. I ah, see, that's not really banana trees. You could get wood from a banana tree. Probably, hmm, probably not the most efficient way. Ironwood tree. Bamboo plants. Excellent. Okay, not a problem. Those already grow pretty damn fast. But I'm still going to just absolutely fill this place up with sprinklers here. Um, well, maybe not. Not fill it up. Let me just put down two sprinklers. See how we get on. Around all this very dense, very futuristic, very compact electronics. That's actually really interesting. The sprinklers. It's, it's basically confirmed my theory that the sprinklers just give a flat amount of growth per day. So it can't grow. Because it's, uh, it, it's currently minus six in there. But because the sprinklers have gone off once, it's given it 13% growth. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Um... Well, let's, let's put some heaters down. You know what? I'm feeling, feeling generous here. We'll go ahead and put down some temperature control units. Why the hell did we put those down? Um, I mean, obviously, I didn't. The, the base the base where they were in their simulation just happened to have that. <clears throat> um, obviously, we don't need to control the temperature any colder on account of it being a freaking ice cap. Let's just get a couple of these down. That should solve the problem, I hope. Gala finally has a job at long last. There we are. Um, let's go ahead and reinstall a couple of, of these so it's a bit more convenient to get over there. Nice. Okay, so those, sh those should all be connected up, right? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so the bamboo's grown. We're just waiting on ingredients now, so waiting on the IO port to be built whenever the spear burglars... You're not going to burgle my spear, young man. Oh, God, they're right there. Oh, come on. What? You can't send the first fucking raid through our roof, you son of a bitch. I suppose the colony wealth is quite large. I haven't even got guns yet. I wasn't prepared for this. How am I supposed to get guns out of the machine? Oh, no. Uh, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Not a problem, not a problem. Um, here we go. Machine, critical, 
Clear all weapons. Uh, you no 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 weapons here. Thank you, sir. Um, <sighs> I'm very annoyed. I'm very annoyed. I'm glad I didn't spend too much time working on that. Right, weapons are, are available. Get your gorse rifles. I'm gonna I'm gonna destroy these people. How dare you stand in the way of science and progress? Get out there, slay them. No, all in bots, all in bots, all in bots. Uh, recall, recall, recall. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, it didn't take a long time to get through the hull, to be fair. Um, right, let's go open door. Open door. Let's open this first bit. I want two of you taking position either side. Um, and then Hocus is gonna get that and then run back. Come on, little Hocus. Hocus, get out of there. Hocus, get out of there. Like I said, please run. Hocus, please run. For God's sake, Hocus, get out of there. Okay, we're doing a good job. We're doing fine. Dr. Don MD. Uh, the Hocus got shot. I assume by our people. Um, how does a leap. How does a lever action rifle get through heavy EVA armor to hit her right in the fucking brain? Her brain is mangled. She lost half her brain in the first friggin' encounter. I'm very angry at you, video game. I'm very angry. How does that make any sense? It's, uh, it was better than fucking heavy marine armor. Christ almighty. How, are you okay? Are you bleeding out? You're fine, though. Oh, it's all right. She had half of her brain blown out by a lever action rifle. Not bleeding out. She's just lying down. Just having a battlefield nap, as they say. You. Oh, I'm so angry about that already. Can I restart? <laughs> you fucks. They're taking cover behind my nice table. Okay, now they're fleeing. They're stealing my damn stereo. Oh, put that back. Put that chair down, you. I can't believe that. We're already going to have to start working on prosthetics. Hocus, for Christ's sake. Ah, <sighs> Mondo, rescue Hocus. Someone put these bloody people out of there. We could capture some people. We're going to need a crew, actually. We're going to need a space crew. We haven't got anywhere to put them right now. Um... Take my friggin' radio. Unbelievable. Right, there you go, you little spear burglars. We're good as new now. Um, Mondo still needs tending to there, but they should be should be self-tending. Right, now to tidy. Oh, there's another one, for Christ's sake. Let's go ahead and bloody tidy this base up as well. Um, bots, come back to life. Do we have a cleaning bot? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we have a cleaning bot. Thank God for that. This will take bloody years. Where <laughs> did they put the bodies? <laughs> um, that's a slight concern, I will admit. I don't know where the bodies ended up. You didn't put them in the storage unit, did you? Is that now full of human corpses? Oh. Is, are our people going to be upset by that? The fact that their meals are... I, I mean, it's a digital storage unit, right? It's just it's just, a, it's just a JPEG of a dead body. Why would they be bothered? Oh, Hocus, are you okay? Uh, intense pain. Darkness. Dark darkness? What? <laughs> okay, I'll trust you on that one. Um, oh, I can't believe that. Already, she's just been, she's just been lobotomized. Christ. Okay, what's that? Oh, she, she went and got a gun already. That's fine. Um, good. Yeah, no, that's fine. Let's, let's swap these out for lentils to start off with. We'll work on some actual proper hydroponics soon, but I think we've got some... We've got bigger fish to fry. Yeah, Hocus, I might have to take you off of construction, my friend. Oh, God. Please, do, I mean, we'll let her have another go, but I don't want her to botch it. Why don't we put her on repair? That's a good idea. Uh, Hocus, you're on, you're on repair duty. Don't worry about, don't worry about building. Don't worry about all those big brain things like building or thinking or feeding yourself. Who's got an infection? Maria. Oh, doesn't that suck? Huh? What a shame. Oh, was it, was it the brains? I'm sorry. I cannot play without rim HUD in this game. It's, it's impossible. I couldn't even find the self 10 button until I had rim HUD enabled. So we're sticking with it. Um, we need a prison quickly. An ice prison for ice monsters. And then we'll start working on the spaceship. Uh, what am I looking for here? Ship and... We don't have to build everything out of ship, I should point out. Um, it just has a nice aesthetic to it. You know what? I'm not going to build it out of ship because it's too expensive. Give me some regular old stinky walls. We could build it out of bamboo. <laughs> A bamboo prison, the most secure of all prisons. Um, no, it's fine. We'll just go for a regular old steel prison down here. Um, if, we, if we put like, um, if we double up the walls here too, it'd take them longer to escape if they ever do actually escape. I want to do something like that, and then we'll put down a kind of central complex. No, 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 not the whole thing, thank you. Um, we'll do a central complex, kind of around, around here, to stuff full of prisoners. That'll do. That's quite nice. And then we'll get some. We'll get a door on that. Um, and I and I want a, a kind of a multi-layered entrance. I also want turrets so that when these prisoners eventually uh, undoubtedly break out, they immediately get shot to make up for. We call it Hocus's revenge. Um, so let's go security. And what do you think is sufficient for 
teaching them a lesson. I, I mean, I would love flame turrets over the whole thing. Um, especially if we do end up building it out of bamboo in the end. Let's go for just a regular old... Like an auto cannon, like a double auto cannon turret. Yeah, that's appropriate. <laughs> is that minimum range? It is. I thought so. Um, if we put it, <laughs> no, that's overkill. That's ridiculous. Um, let's put like a steel turret there, and there, and there, and there. That way, if they break out, there's quite a trick. No, that one's not got a very good angle. Just there too. That way, if they break out, there's quite a tree nowhere they can go. Um, floors? They don't need good floors. Just regular old... No, actually, we should probably keep their mood high, because I don't want to be juggling prisoners while we're, um, you know, trying to work on a damn spaceship. We'll do something like that. And I'll give them some nice beds in a minute. We need to do this quickly before they all bloody recover as well. Travelers? Where are you traveling to, buddy? There's nothing but the Arctic Circle in that direction. Okay, see you later then. The first ship we're going to start with. Actually, you know what? I'll talk about that more in a minute. Let's get this. Let's deal with the kind of basic stuff. And then we'll, we'll dedicate the end bit of this episode to actually planning out our first ship. And maybe even trying to get some of the parts down as soon as possible. What were you two doing on work time? Dr. Donamondo, again. You boys, you need to stick to... Look at the schedule. It's work time, you pieces of shit. It's 9 a.m. For God's sake, I'm not paying you for that. I think we're gonna lose one of our 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 capturees here. One of one of our little spear burglars. 73% and 88% infection. I can't do anything about that. We didn't exactly have anywhere to keep you guys. We've only just come out of bloody simulation storage for Christ's sake. Oh, hang on, how did they get the darkness debuff? We're in the Arctic Circle. It's it's quite literally 99% brightly lit at 2 a.m. How would you ever get in darkness? Like the bedrooms are the bedrooms are lit 50%. In fact, it's it's yeah, it's darker inside. <laughs> what? I mean, obviously, it being darker inside is fairly normal, but not when it's 2 a.m. Uh, right, let's get down some beds very quickly. I don't really care about these. To be honest, hospital beds, just kind of preemptively, would be quite nice. Oh, we need bloody cloth for it. Ugh, space sucks. Um, give me some... Yep, we, we, we can't build beds. We have no cloth. Okay, um, we can build them operating tables, because that way they also get a bonus to being tended. So when they turn up our base and get shot... Um, you know, there's quite a high chance they'll survive. Oh, you can connect that up to everything, too. Vitals monitors, war vitals monitors, a vital center. Oh, that's fantastic. Now it's Ciala or Mondo. Stop this. Fucking Mondo. We need to lock this man up. He cannot be contained. Mondo agreed. Oh, to be fair, it was Ciala, though. Is he, like, a beautiful man or something? What's going on with this guy? Uh, Bio. Uh, he's a master... Oh, he's a, he's a, he's a bloodlusting psychopath. Master diplomat, that'll be it. Silver tongue. Has to work what? A steel operating table. Oh, they'll be so pleased. <laughs> right, let's say for... If we say not medical, but four prisoners, it still gains the medical bonuses, the medical connections, right? It's The only difference it makes is that they'll prioritize taking prisoners over there, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, well. Um, right, try to arrest them. You do not resist arrest. Well, Hocus, maybe not you. They'll probably resist from you, to be honest. Probably get out a set of keys at this point. <laughs> so sorry, Hocus. Could you imagine if it would have been Mondo, though? He spent almost all of last series dead and then resurrects only to immediately get shot in the head again. That would have that would have been a lot worse. Right, you shits. There you are. One tasty base. Uh, let's build a quick roof over that. That would help out, seeing as it is very, very cold on this map. Um, if we open this up, they might even have room for a dining table if they're lucky. And they say I commit war crimes. What? How are they prison breaking already? What are you talking about? For God's sake, we've given you luxury here, people. Okay, uh, bear in mind we have the turrets active. So let's get down there quick. I'm so glad I built the prison out of out of operating tables and gave them all the IV drips and everything. Otherwise, they would already be in a lot of trouble here. Um, I've missed something, haven't I? Surgical instruments, surgical lamp. Oh, bedside tables. Yeah, sure, if you actually can be bothered to make those. Right, please hurry, please hurry. They're escaping. T take them down. Don't kill them, for God's sake. Don't aim for the head, you weirdos. We need a crew for our ship. Come on, come on. Please get some survivors here. Good work, good work, good work. Okay, okay. Uh, undraft. Mondo. Uh, oh, you know what? Everybody undraft. Um, let's get... Dr. Don should be rescuing. Harvesting red lantern. This is why you lost your friggin' me medical license, pal. Unbelievable. Ciala, uh, you capture Taiki. I think we're probably going to lose some people here. I'll be honest with you. We've got no medicine. Uh, we used it all on the uh, on these here. Okay, come on. No, don't don't put him there though. Uh, how can I make that not for? I don't I don't want him there. Um, set owner, set owner, set owner. Um, oh, you can't set owner because it's a prisoner bed. Bollocks! I didn't want him there because it's the only one without an IV drip, an active IV drip. Um, that's okay. We can solve that problem by doing that. Not not a concern. There you are. Right? How are they doing? 
13 hours, 7 hours, 7 hours. Oh, you know what? They actually might be fine. Yeah, we should be good. I mean, they are in a, a pretty decent hospital there for, for early game stuff too. If we put a radio down in there or outside so they can't smash it up, it should keep their moods decently high as well, shouldn't it? Oh, you know what? We can't put it outside. It doesn't cover the whole thing. Um, fine, we'll put it in there. But if you guys smash it up, you don't get another one. It's as simple as that. Um, we'll put it... I assume they can move past it if we put it there, right? Because that way their, their mood... Is, it's, it's, it doesn't count as recreational or anything, which obviously prisoners don't need, but it counts as just a passive mood buff. So it'll be a, a way to help reduce resistance a little bit quicker. Ciala, Ciala, Ciala. We need you working a little bit faster on this because this is... There we are. That's what I was after. Um, all right, let's get you... Um, you are an input uh, or not. No, no, no. An input to digital storage unit. Then we want steel outputs as well. Um, it's going to take a little while to get this place nice and efficient, but just let, let them give them another day of crafting. That'd be good in no time. You just throw this straight on the floor. Let's uh, Look, you could move a step further and actually put them into storage. Oh, we got someone already. Taiki, welcome. Are you any good? I should probably check that first. Super immune, tough, nimble, trigger happy. Hey, that's a yes. Fantastic. So then, uh, supporters, comment section. As per usual, I need some names for my names list. Of course, I will be taking from the supporters first because I feel like it's only fair. But after that, I'll populate the list with other name suggestions for our crew for this series. God knows how we're actually going to start a crew when we get off the planet. I assume we could capture some enemy vessels. Uh, we could use boarding parties to board them and, uh, or slave ships or something like that. I don't really know. Stop off at planets and just kidnap people. That could also work. We could have a crew of Stellarks. And we could go planet to planet kidnapping the Stellarks. There's something quite cool about that idea. We'll worry about it later. There's a fuel left before we have to... Uh... Oh, we made the data disk, did we? So the data disk is done. You are waiting for instructions. What the hell do you mean waiting for instructions? You have instructions. Um, a minimum of... Yeah, five... We have not. We don't have enough components. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Not a big deal. It shouldn't take us long to churn those out, right? Just gotta wait on Ciala to. Okay. There we are. We're good. Making a simple machine frame. Hey, there we are. Nice. I believe with our simple machine frame, we then make the industrial furnace. Correct. Five components, one simple machine frame. So we can take this guy apart now um, and get you down instead. Uh, no, no, no. Industrial. Am I insane? Where the hell's it gone? Uh, industrial furnace, auger drill, drone cultivator, industrial. Oh, it is the industrial furnace. Sorry, my bad. There we are. And you, I believe, make the advanced ones. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, we're good. Problem solved. And that should allow us to make everything else. So that's pretty much the, 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 the time limit part of things dealt with. So for the first ship, it's a very obvious one I want to build. And I floated this idea last series, but of course, building it would have cost us. Oh, it wouldn't have cost us a huge amount because, of course, we did have the, the, the plant resources. It would have taken us a very, 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 very long time. With what we've got going on here, with the ability to very quickly deliver resources to resource sites, with the ability to basically generate resources a lot faster than the last series, depending on our power output. Once we get a decent power grid, we can churn out resources like that. At that point, we can build whatever we want. Now, my first ship this time around is going to be a very simple one. It is going to be the spinal capacitor of our hopes and dreams. So right at the bottom here. Oh, <laughs> oh, this is a horrible idea. Right at the bottom of the map, we are going to build a single spinal capacitor. From there, no, no, no. It needs to be higher than that, doesn't it? Um, we need at least a corridor to get to it. We could get to it from either side. No, we need to put wrap the ship all around it. So I believe that is the absolute very maximum we can have. Unless you go for, obviously, a larger map size. And then what we're going to do is quite simply... Build spinal amplifiers all the way to the top of the map. And then we're going to strap some engines to it. We're going to strap a shitload of heat sinks and power to it. And we're probably going to watch as it very disappointingly gets blown up. Ooh, power fluctuations already. We can turn off the shield generator, to be fair. That was kind of just an aesthetics choice. Um, I still not helped. Oh, God. Okay, I didn't realize the power was quite going to get this bad this fast. Um, are all these batteries connected up? They are. Wow. Um... Let's turn these off then for the time. They're 750 watts piece, and we can't even use them yet because we can't make data disks. Has that saved it? Uh, not really. It's a start. It, it's something. Maybe we could turn off that giant fuck-off television I decided to build as the very first thing. Uh, you know what? Not a terrible idea. We do need to work on a hydroponics bay tomorrow. Um, hydroponics bay and then housing for the other people. That's basically it in terms of our residential stuff. Then it's all in spaceship building. 
God, I'm going to regret building this thing, aren't I? Leave it there for today, then. I think I think we've made a pretty good start. We already got one new recruit, which I didn't expect to get, to be honest, at all on the planet. So that's quite nice. Um, we'll have to work on some slight defenses to make sure that our giant ship we're building is not completely vulnerable to enemy attacks or anything like that. That would suck. But besides that, I think we're I think we're on to a winner this time around. I'm, I'm dreading to think what this thing is going to look like when we're done with it. Thank you to our executive producers of the day, including Ben DPB, Kyle Madoxa, Hero of My Crotch, Philosophical You Prize, Callum James 3, Scott L, Flyer Scream, Sideshow C, Tom P, Skaz, Ethox, Devorder, Simba, Ice Stab Cows, Zetlock, and Crow Skull for their support at the executive producer tiers on Coffee. A big thank you to those guys for keeping the channel going. And a thank you as well goes out to... Ribbit, Pantherpearl, Athom, Monster, Noisis Dungeon, Dancing, Lucifer, Contrawabby, Groggy, Ray Karinga, Sanit Lover, Madness, El Nada, and Stormcrower as well, along with everybody at home for their support and keeping the channel going. I hope you guys are enjoying this one. Uh, it's going to be a lot faster. This is going to be a much, much faster series than the last time, so I'm hoping we can get to shenanigans pretty goddamn fast.